right now with the career lessons you should have learned in school, but you never did, is our career coach, Sarah Vermont. <laughs> just published her second book, Career Rookie, a get-it-together guide for grad students and career newbies. We're so excited that we can talk about this on the show. When I met you first on the show, you had launched your first book, and like, bam, all of a sudden your second book, you're an accomplished author now, girl. Like, Thank this is you. amazing. Mm. And the information, like, it's so salient because there are so many people that are in careers they don't love, they're in a place where they, they never thought they were going to stay, and they need to sort of figure out how to shift gears. Um, and there are a lot of things that were surprising. So let's talk about some of the things that we didn't learn that we should have. Right, so first and foremost, God, wouldn't it have been nice if we learned that your career interests will change over time? Yes. Right? You'll evolve. Nobody tells you that. So you pick a thing when you're 17, because right. you have to choose where you want to go to school. So here we are picking our career paths at 17 when we're still forming as humans. Yeah. Um, and often that means that your interests will change by the time you graduate. In fact, only 7% of people have the same career goals at 25 as they had at 17 when they had to pick their career path. Oh, wow. So that means 93% of people are getting out of school and straight up panicking because they no longer want what they wanted when they applied to school. That is scary. Yeah. That is pretty scary. And I, and I mean, it totally makes sense. Why would you know at that young in your life what you want to do for the rest of your life? That's right. So if your interests have changed, you should just know that's totally normal. And yeah. in fact, you're in the same boat as most people. Yeah. And unfortunately, when your interests do naturally change over time, because you're an evolving, growing human, yeah. a lot a lot of people feel a lot of shame about that and a lot of regret and they feel like oh I picked the wrong thing it's not that you picked the wrong thing it's just that you didn't know who you were gonna become and how you were gonna change and grow yeah. so if you can drop or soften some of that self-judgment it's really really helpful actually yes you're very good you're you have got to be forgiving with yourself absolutely it's okay it's not your fault it's all right yeah so now you you figured you're you might not be in the um, in the right place mm -hmm. what do you do now next yes well to be honest most people panic yeah that's what you do first yeah to be totally honest and people panic because usually they're in a place where they know what they don't want but yes. they don't yet know what they do want right. that in-between place is a really kind of scary place to be mm -hmm. and so very often what you can do is think of what instead of trying to think of your dream job title think in terms of like career ingredients like just start thinking about what kind of work tasks do I enjoy? What kind of people do I want to be around? Mm -hmm. And what kind of people do I not want to be around? Right. Because that really matters, actually. Usually when it we does. think about careers, we only think about career tasks yeah. and work tasks. But people matters, yes. environment matters. So you should really start thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Also, there's a big difference between reverse engineering your career and feeling it out. And most people have to kind of toggle between those two strategies okay. throughout their career. So we all wish that we could reverse engineer everything because it's like you pick a thing, you figure out how other people did it, and then you just sort of follow that path. Yes. But for most of us, we felt lost at one point or another. I know I've been there. Most people in the audience have probably been there. Mm -hmm. And so when you're in that in-between phase when you don't know what you want, you do have to start feeling it out and leaning into some of your curiosities just as right. a way of learning more information. Yes. And very often you'll have to toggle between those two things. Okay. Like I'm a great example of that. I went to journalism school, mm -hmm. totally didn't actually like it and mm -hmm. didn't want to become a journalist. So I was one of those people who graduated and was like, but now what? Right. And so when I was in that phase, <laughs> I actually just kept my crappy retail job for a couple of months yeah. while I figured out my next couple of moves. Right. And once I figured out what I wanted to do, I was like, okay, I'll get a little bit strategic about it. Then that career was no longer interesting for me. And yes. I thought, oh, okay, I think I'm gonna be a professor. So I reverse engineered that and I got there, realized, okay, there's some parts of this that I like, but actually not everything right. so I had to sort of feel things out and so most of us will go through that process mm -hmm. of reverse engineering and then having to experiment a little bit 
So instead of thinking that's such a bad thing, that's actually normal. It's just so you need natural. somewhere to live while you're experimenting. Absolutely. Like don't move <laughs> yes. out. Don't move out because someone needs to be paying your rent during this experimentation phase. I think that's the issue. People spend the money on school and then they think, well, I have to stay in this. Yeah, or I have to go I back to school money, right away. Or I have to go back to school right away, which isn't necessarily the right not, thing, is it? Not necessarily true. I mean, yeah. if you're going into a field where it's highly regulated and there's a certain degree you need, absolutely go back to school if you can afford it, if you have yeah. the time and money. Um, but in many cases, you actually don't have to go back to school. So taking your time to figure things out, yeah. even if it's just a few months while you're working what I call a just for now job, yes. can be really helpful. You say mentors uh, matter more than you might think. Yeah, because we don't learn this career navigation thing yes. in school. You have to learn how to do it while you're building your career. Right. The tricky thing about mentorship is like straight up asking for mentorship kind of feels like asking someone out on a date. Mm -hmm. Like it's a very tender sort of vulnerable place to mm -hmm. be. And so what I often tell people to do is like ask for mentorship or advice on a specific project or a specific topic. Mm -hmm. Because then the person you're approaching doesn't feel like they have to invest everything in mm -hmm. you. It's like a nice like it's like asking someone out for coffee before you ask for an engagement, right? Yes. Like, just let's go slow, people. There's yeah. also this thing I call uh, mentorship by stealth. Okay. And that is simply just watching and paying attention to what some of the people you admire are doing. Right. And so you don't actually have to be in their proximity, working on projects with them to sort of pay attention and notice and borrow some of their career moves. Oh, I love that idea. Yeah. See, I've been doing that, but it didn't have a title till now. Mentorship by <laughs> stealth. Yes. yes. Like sneakily just watching, like, you know, people you admire. Yeah. And as someone who gets asked to be a mentor, I don't know, three times a week. An hour. An hour. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love when people who want to be mentored will say to me, can you help me with this specific issue? Yes. Because if you say that you want a mentor, I feel like I will be a disappointment because I have to spend the time on the kids and the husband and the dog and the, the career, and I feel like I won't be able to give you the amount of time you need. It feels daunting. Yeah, so if ask you tell for me, small. just ask, like, how, what do I do with this interview? I will help you. Yeah. So it's a better way, it's a better way for both sides, I think, yes, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and so I find myself mentoring many people, but they're yes. doing it the right way. Yeah.